Section 21 of Bird Stories from Burroughs by John Burroughs. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bird Stories from Burroughs by John Burroughs. The Cedar Bird. How alert and vigilant the birds are, even when absorbed in building their nests. In an open space in the woods I see a pair of cedar birds collecting moss from the top of a dead tree. Following the direction in which they fly, I soon discover the nest placed in the fork of a small soft maple, which stands amid a thick growth of wild cherry trees and young beeches. Carefully concealing myself beneath it, without any fear that the workman will hit me with a chip or let fall a tool, I await the return of the busy pair. Presently I hear the well-known note, and the female sweeps down and settles unsuspectingly into the half-finished structure. Hardly have her wings rested before her eye has penetrated my screen, and with a hurried movement of alarm she darts away. In a moment the male, with a tuft of wool in his beak, for there is a sheep pasture near, joins her, and the two reconnoiter the premises from the surrounding bushes. With their beaks still loaded, they flit round with a frightened look, and refuse to approach the nest till I have moved off and lain down behind a log. Then one of them ventures to alight upon the nest, but, still suspecting all is not right, quickly darts away again. Then they both together come, and after much peeping and spying about, and apparently much anxious consultation, cautiously proceed to work. In less than half an hour it would seem that wool enough has been brought to supply the whole family, real and prospective, with socks, if needles and fingers could be found fine enough to knit it up. In less than a week the female has begun to deposit her eggs, four of them in as many days, white tinged with purple, with black spots on the larger end. After two weeks of incubation, the young are out. Excepting the American goldfinch, this bird builds later in the season than any other, its nest in our northern climate seldom being undertaken till July. As with the goldfinch, the reason is, probably, that suitable food for the young cannot be had at an earlier period. I knew a pair of cedar birds one season to build in an apple tree, the branches of which rubbed against the house. For a day or two before the first straw was laid, I noticed the pair carefully exploring every branch of the tree, the female taking the lead, the male following her with an anxious note and look. It was evident that the wife was to have her choice this time, and, like one who thoroughly knew her mind, she was proceeding to take it. Finally the site was chosen upon a high branch, extending over one low wing of the house. Mutual congratulations and caresses followed, when both birds flew away in quest of building material. That most freely used is a sort of cotton-bearing plant, which grows in old worn-out fields. The nest is large for the size of the bird, and very soft. It is, in every respect, a first-class domicile. The cedar bird is the most silent bird we have. Our neutral-tinted birds, like him, as a rule are our finest songsters. But he has no song or call, uttering only a fine, bead-like note on taking flight. This note is the cedar berry rendered back in sound, when the ox-heart cherries, which he has only recently become acquainted with, have had time to enlarge his pipe and warm his heart. I shall expect more music from him. But in lieu of music, what a pretty compensation are those minute, almost artificial-like plumes of orange and vermilion that tip the ends of his wing quills. Nature could not give him these, and a song too. End of section 21